All right, welcome back. Now, the race for the 2019 general elections is rapidly heating up. Last week, uh, 38 political parties in Nigeria signed an MOU, that's a memorandum of understanding now, to come together to challenge the ruling All Progressives Congress in next year's general elections. To put it more precisely, defeat President Buhari in next year's presidential election. The 38 parties led by the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, agreed in principle to produce a single presidential candidate to challenge the APC. In fact, one of the prominent party leaders even went as far as suggesting that the coalition should field same candidate in all the various elective positions in the election. They are calling the initiative Coalition of United Political Party Cup. It's still not clear whether they would be running for the election under that name. If that be the case, they would have to register the name and, of course, submit it to INEC. Now, also party to that MOU is the Reformed All Progressives Congress, a splinter group that broke away from the ruling APC. Of course, not all political parties signed up to the MOU. Nigeria currently has uh, 68 registered political parties, meaning 29 more parties declined to join. Besides, some of the political parties mentioned as having joined the coalition have since come out to deny it. Some others have announced they are pulling out. Take a listen now to some of the sound bites during the MOU signing. I am confident that should we put our acts together, should we tap together, if we are fair to ourselves, do things transparent, transparently, and bring up one man or woman. We will save, we will save this country, we will provide a future for our children and grandchildren. All our votes, please listen carefully, must go to the same governing candidate in every state. All our votes must go to the same senatorial candidate in every senatorial district. All our votes or go to the same member of the House of Representatives oh. in every state. All our votes or go to the same member of the House of Assembly in every state. And all our votes or go to the same governorship candidate in every state. Why? Because it is not sufficient to elect a president. The thing the president needs to do, he needs the legislative branch. We need to restructure Nigeria. I'm sure in this country today, there are some youths, there are some elders, there are some women that will go to bed and they will sleep well. This is expected of a country where people are bold, where people are courageous, where people can shape the future. And that's what we are doing today. Now, the ruling All Progressives Congress has responded to the coalition. The national chairman, Adam Soshomole, has described it as, quote, dead on arrival, insisting that he remains confident his party would emerge victorious in the 2019 general elections. So for now, the reformed APC has taken the APC to court, seeking to nullify the convention that produced the national leadership of the party. The chairman of the RAPC, Buba Galadima, wants the court to declare his group as the authentic APC leadership. Now, without a doubt, this is an interesting period in Nigerian politics. All parties have until October the 17th to declare their presidential candidates, and Nigerians will be watching for the candidate that will be presented by the coalition the APC, and of course, the 29 other political parties. But joining me right now to discuss further on the coalition of United Political Party Cup is Dr. Abuba Karakari, a senior lecturer at the University of Abuja and a political analyst. Um, let me start by asking what exactly or how significant is this coalition? Well, it's a very, signif uh, it's a very significant political development uh, in the sense that uh, it will likely going to have a huge impact on the 2019 elections, uh, a situation where a number of parties congregated together or coalesced and form an alliance to challenge a ruling party. It is even more significant given the fact that uh, 
similar, though not exactly uh, the same coalition, uh, was formed in 2015 and it effectively ousted the People's Democratic Party as uh, a ruling party. Uh, the All People's Congress uh, at that time was a fusion of uh, a number of parties who came together and successfully challenged uh, the PDP. So some people are expecting that uh, a similar scenario might be enacted. Uh, perhaps that, uh, they realize the significance uh, of this alliance. Now, Doc, take your mind back to 2013 or thereabout when uh, the APC, I mean, when those political parties actually came together to, uh, uh, to, to form the APC. I'm talking about the merger now of uh, the ACN, AMPP, and of course the CPC and part of ABGA. You look at those parties that formed the merger. There were actually political parties that were in control of some states. For instance, the ACN then was in control of some states. Uh, the ANPP was also in control of some states. Same thing for uh, the CPC as well as ABGA. But in the case of this coalition, with the exception of the PDP, uh, the other parties, if you like, uh, for, for want of a better word to use now, uh, can best be described as, um, you know, parties on papers with, with basically no structure. Yeah, you are right. Uh, and there lies the major fundamental shortcoming uh, of this alliance. Uh, though initially they claimed that about 39 or 40 political parties uh, had formed an alliance, uh, within hours about 20 dissociated themselves from the alliance. And even those uh, who are in the alliance, as you rightly pointed out, they were all like the four or five legacy parties that fused together and formed the APC uh, in 2013. This time around, what is being contemplated is actually not a fusion of political parties. Rather, the parties claim that uh, they are congregating together so that uh, they can present uh, a single candidate uh, to challenge the APC while they retain their own identity. Uh, this is quite an interesting but uh, potentially difficult uh, scenario. And uh, that is why some analysts, including myself, uh, are not giving the CUPP alliance uh, more chance, at least uh, if they continue the way they are now. Of course, we know that along the line, and we, we have seen that happen, some parties are opting out, saying that um, they, they are not part of the coalition anymore. How much of a problem is that going to be for this coalition? Well, it poses uh, two problems. First, it boasts the propaganda of the uh, initial proponents of, uh, of the CUPP, where they were uh, a solid alliance. The second major problem uh, is the fact that it appears enough consultations uh, had not been concluded before they came out to announce uh, or declare their existence. Another thing is uh, it all shows that they have a long way to go and uh, they have a lot of talks and consultations uh, to do before they perfect the alliance itself. Now, we, we had one of the leaders of um, the, the coalition now, Olufalai of uh, the Social Democratic Party, uh, make quite a stunning proposal, if you ask me, saying that um, all the parties in the coalition should support uh, one candidate, not just one candidate for the presidential election, but one candidate for every position. For instance, they should support a candidate or present a candidate for positions in the House of Representatives, the Senate, state houses of assembly, assemblies now, governors and all of that. Do you think that proposal is something that will fly, especially with the PDP? And when you consider the fact that uh, the other parties in this coalition, as you have said, are more or less briefcase political parties? For me, that would be extremely difficult. Uh, it may be feasible to present a single candidate for the presidency, for instance. 
uh, particularly given the fact that many of these parties do not have the capacity and the structure to present uh, candidates of their own. But going down the line, it will be very, very difficult because uh, membership of these parties are populated with individuals who have both strong aspirations and ambition to contest for positions uh, for governors, senators, members of House of Representatives, uh, state assemblies, and so on and so forth. It will be very, very difficult, no matter the kind of consultation or talk, to persuade people to drop uh, their ambitions. So I see a lot of problems ahead uh, if these parties attempt that at all levels they must present uh, a single candidate. It will be very, very difficult to achieve. Now, APC has dismissed the coalition as posing no threat at all. What, what do you make of that dismissal? Well, this is merely uh, to put up a, a brief uh, face. I don't think it is realistic for the uh, APC uh, to dismiss uh, this coalition, which uh, comprises uh, uh, prominent uh, politicians who have been governors, ministers, and have held very important positions uh, in government, uh, who are quite uh, influential politically. Many of them have uh, very solid structures. However, it is not unexpected. Uh, we remember in 2013, that was the same initial uh, reaction of the PDP towards the, uh, the formation uh, of the APC. But however one looks at it, it is not uh, realistic for the APC to dismiss these people. They constitute some kind of threat uh, to it. How much or how strong this uh, threat is remains to be seen. And let's talk about this reformed APC. How much of a threat or a problem do you think it will be for the, the APC itself? Well, it depends on the, how you look at it. The so-called uh, reform APC comprises of very prominent politicians. Uh, they have their own constituencies. Uh, they are aggrieved. And someone who is aggrieved is capable of doing a lot of damage. And I strongly believe that the, the APC is better uh, if these people are within its fault. Uh, if it loses uh, some of them, uh, there will likely be kind of, uh, some kind of consequences. However, overall, as of now, I do not think in terms uh, of the presidential uh, election, they pose the kind of threats that they are pretending to pose. But at lower levels, they can do a lot of damage because some of them are capable of costing APC uh, some governorship uh, positions, national and state assemblies, and so on and so forth. Do you think the APC can resolve its problems now before um, the, the election? Can it resolve this problem, for instance, especially the problem with, with the uh, RAPC guys? You think these problems can be resolved before the election? Well, from uh, the look of things, it is practically impossible for the APC to persuade some of the elements within the uh, RAPC to stay. For the simple reason that these people have aspirations, they have ambition, and it appears such ambitions cannot be realized under the APC. They have been excluded, uh, the party has had its uh, convention, and they do not have confidence that uh, they are going to uh, gain much if they stay. So it's very likely that some or most of them are going to leave. One last question before I let you go. So where are Nigerians in all of this? Well, unfortunately, it is one of the features of third world politics that uh, it is an elite thing. It's an elite uh, contestation for power and the masses of the people are not normally uh, requiring with. All these things is just a struggle for power, struggle for the purposes of power, uh, attempts uh, to realize and satisfy individual and group interest. The masses are not part of the political equation. 
as unfortunate as it is. Dr. Abubakar Kari, senior lecturer at the University of Abuja and, of course, a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll be right back. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. The constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. Why we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. Yeah. DG360, providing clarity to issues.